Okay, boys and girls, so you can see right here I have my paper and I have my idea sheet. I'm going to do this fairly quickly. The first thing I want you to notice is you have lots of colors to choose from, but you're probably going to zero in on just one. But just for right now, I want you to be thinking about what color do you think you're feeling today? And if you happen to be missing one, it just means that maybe it got misplaced and you can go to the back of the room to get another. Now, of all these gorgeous oil pastels, I want you to find the one kind of sad black crayon and you're going to start off with him. So notice that I have my full sheet of paper here. You can do it going sideways, which we call landscape, or you can do it up and down, which we call portrait. And you're going to notice here on this sheet of paper, on the idea sheet, that I have different shapes of bodies just to kind of help you out. Some people like to roll the dice and do the one that's underneath it. You don't necessarily have to do that. You could just choose which body shape, which head shape, etc. I'll show you both ways. So if I wanted to do it with the dice, what I could do is because I'm starting with the body shape, I could roll the dice and see that I have a number two. So I go to two and underneath the body shape, it looks a little bit triangular. Now I don't have to do that one, but if I'd like to, I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Now notice that when you draw, you're going to want to draw pretty big so that you don't end up with this tiny little color monster. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw his jaggedy sides or her jaggedy sides. I'll just have to decide. And then I'm going to come back right there. So I have my color monster's body. Yay for me. Now for the head, there are different options here. I could even go ahead and look here and see if there's a head option. This one even shows one with it to the side. So you can go ahead and decide that for yourself. But for right now, once again, I'm going to roll the dice. I rolled a four. I look here and now I'm going under the head and that almost looks like a cat shaped color monster, doesn't it? Now one. I'm going to go ahead and add that then. Remember, I don't have to, but it looks kind of funny to me. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go like this and I'm going to put on those ears that I always seem to see on my color monster and go like that and then back down. Kind of looks like he's puzzled. Now, the next thing, for the next ones, I'm just going to choose not to roll the dice. I have to choose my eyes. And because my guy seems to be, I'm thinking that he's maybe confused today, I'm going to go ahead and give my color monsters eyes that look like they're wide open. And maybe I'll put that those eyebrows that the color monsters sometimes have. Maybe I'll make them look kind of like, hmm? I don't get it. What's going on? I don't understand. Now I get to choose a mouth. And because I'm thinking he looks a little confused, maybe I'll put it over here like that. Hmm, I don't get it. And I always like it that he's got these little teeth, so I can give him that too. And then I have to choose some arms. So that's usually pretty easy. I think I'll choose arms that look like this. Like he's saying, I don't understand. Looks a little weird to me. And then down here, I'll add some legs and I'll just give them some regular feet like I've seen in the other color monsters. Now that I have my shape, I'm going to put it down a little bit here where you can't see its face. I have to decide what color do I think is confused. I think I'm going to go with orange. I, I don't know why, but I'm going to. And because I'm going to do that, the first thing I want to show you is that on the color monster, you'll notice that they use almost like texture, almost like furry texture. So I'm going to go ahead and add that on my monster.
On the back of the room, you're going to see that I have crayons. So because I wasn't even sure what color I was gonna go with from the beginning, I now know I want orange. So I just went to the back of the room and I got a few more different shades of orange. And now I'm just gonna go and add a little bit of that here and there as well. And you'll notice that sometimes I almost did like kind of like a scribble scrabble thing on my, on my color monster. It doesn't always have to be perfect because in a moment you're gonna see that we're actually going to be painting on top of my color monster. Now, you might remember that when we were looking at the book of the color monster, that not only did they have the color monster drawn, but they used a few little scribbles to tell us a few things. The first thing that it did was it drew, they drew kind of like a, a base, something for my color monster to stand on. So I think I might do the same, that I'm just kind of drawing a little uh, oval underneath my color monster so it looks like he's not floating in the air. The next thing that they do sometimes is that they added some things to just kind of give a clue so for me, because I decided that my guy is puzzled, I think I might add a question mark. Now you don't have to do that, but if you want to, you can just add a clue and maybe I'll put some lines coming out of his head like he's really just stumped at what's going on. The last thing that you'll do, and maybe I'll color this in too. The very last thing you're going to do is you're going to take your watercolor and you're going to find the color that matches your color monster. You are going to dip it into the water, dip it into the color you chose, and now you're just going to go and fill in the rest of it. And the very last thing that I have noticed is that it's almost like they put just the tiniest shadow around the color monster. So if you rinse your brush really well and dip it in the water and just put it in a little bit of blue, you can almost come and just kind of add a little bit of blue around it. The only thing you're going to want to make sure you don't do is touch touch uh, the wet part of your color because otherwise it's going to bleed around there. Okay, I hope you're gonna have a lot of fun with your color monster today. Remember that you are first drawing your color monster with your crayon. Then as you work, it could be that you're gonna start off knowing what emotion you wanna have. And maybe by the time you finish drawing them, you're gonna say, huh, my guy, I kinda think he looks different than what I originally started with. Then you're going to think to yourself, what color matches the emotion that I think my color monster is feeling. You're going to put the texture with the colors and the oil pastels, and then you'll finish it off with paint. And don't forget to give some sort of clue around the outside as to what emotion your color monster is feeling. One thing I don't want you to do is to actually write the word. I don't want you to write the word mad or something like that. That is for the audience to discover on their own. Have fun.